Live from Oslug 2013 in Brisbane, Australia, this is Chris Crummy with the keynote, Spike Studio Productions doing the recording once again. Uh, 
which I'm just gonna show you screenshots of my iPad and just kind of walk you through uh, a day in the life of how we use it, plus some of the up and coming like, technologies uh, in that area. Um, and then we're gonna go through how IBM is actually adopting this new cultural behavior, this new, what we call it IBM, being a digital IBMer. That's what we kind of announced internally, is this concept of being a digital IBMer. And that all deals with being about the social business strategy. Uh, my Twitter handle is ccrummy. Uh, if you want to tweet um, any aha moments, feel free to do that, okay? So let's start. The big picture. One of the things we're trying to do is take the success of what happens uh, in the social media and apply it to business. So one of our strategies is to call Sunday, Sunday night to Monday morning experience. That, that does not work in, in the Middle East because they actually work on Sundays. It's Friday is a holiday. So I have, I've changed that statement uh, in the Middle East. So Sunday night, you're on LinkedIn. Just show up here. How many people have a LinkedIn account? Okay, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest. Ooh, that dropped. <laughs> that dropped. Okay. All right, good. So I get a feel for, for where we are on this situation. Um, so what we're trying to do is move this idea of what we do on a Sunday night. So Sunday night, you're on LinkedIn, you're on Twitter, you're on Facebook, and apply it to Monday morning. So I'm in the office and I'm doing at mentions. I'm increasing my network. I'm collaborating without having to know the email addresses. I'm using other people as a tipper. There's a great book by Malcolm Gladwell called The, the Tipping Point. And it talks about there are certain people that tip things or drive things for you. And that is one of the biggest aha moments I had at IBM is I wanted to leverage the tippers. I actually have in my name and address book called the tippers list. And in that list are what I call the influencers, the people that influence the most. And so I'm, I'm leveraging that concept to do that. So on the, left, on the left hand side, you'll see this idea of create a smarter workforce. And that is a huge focus for what we're trying to do. We're trying to create a smarter workforce. One of my famous statements, um, not my famous statements, but one of the famous statements we've heard within IBM around social business is there's a woman named Laura Wolf that says, I'm as smart as you. You know why I love using IBM Connections at IBM? is because I'm as smart as you, but five minutes later. Right, she's caught on to that fact that if she follows really smart people, she's as smart as them, but five minutes later. And that's a huge aha moment for a lot of people. So how do I create a smarter workforce? And how do I deliver an exceptional experience? Honestly, you have about 12 seconds of my time. If I'm shopping on the internet, or I'm doing, you got about 12 seconds of my time to make the impression. And if you don't, I'm gone. I'm looking, I'm gonna go back to Google, and I'm gonna find your competitor. If I, if I, I judge a place by the feeling I get the first 12 seconds. That's what you mean by an exceptional customer experience. Are you driving that customer experience both on the inside and the outside of your firewall? So there has to be a business value associated with this. We'll talk more about that as we get along, but that's the purpose is uh, business value. Let's talk a little bit about our big picture. So this is what we call the, the social business framework. And we've got a, a set of solutions that are on the top here. The first one I just talked about is this idea of smarter workforce. So IBM is trying to use WebSphere Portal, IBM Connections, and mobility as one of the three major ways to make IBM a smarter workforce. We also just had a $1.2 billion acquisition called Connexa, which is about talent management. They manage everything from hiring to retiring. Disney, General Electric, Walmart, they're all, they're all customers of Connexa. So imagine a very powerful career site driven through that situation. So how do, I, how do I hire the right people in that situation? And then over to the right is this idea of smarter commerce. And, and where we fit in is this idea of exceptional customer experience. So those are the two solutions on the bottom. On the lower right-hand corner is our social networking. That's where we get connections, we get notes, and we get same time. Or what I'm referring to as social communications. Right? We have this idea of social analytics, social content, 
and social integration. And social integration is this idea of portal, the different services that portal bring to, bring to bear. And then we have different options of a cloud, dedicated private cloud, on-premises, and a hybrid model as a way to deliver those things. But let me, let me, let me explain what, why I'm showing you this framework. When we don't, we should not sell features and functions. We have to sell business outcomes. We have to sell business outcomes because that's what you're actually buying. So let's start with four examples of combining the key is combining parts of this framework to be solution-oriented. It's not just one product. It's actually the combination of these things together that make it very powerful. So one example here is the ozone solution by Omron in Europe. These guys are amazing what they've done. Absolutely amazing. So this is a, a combination of the social networking and portal combined together. And it's tough to see, but I'll, I'll try to show you what the slide is. So they type in the customer name. So they've got 10 minutes before they're about to go meet a customer. So they type in the customer's name. So it's a sales application. It shows them all of the tweets about that company and by that company. It shows them all of the YouTube videos. It shows them uh, the LinkedIn, their specific, their personal LinkedIn connections to that customer. And then it integrates all of the social networking data on the inside plus the leverage, same time, and Traveler, and I did Cognos, and everything else as one unified solution, right? So what they're trying to do is generate a smarter workforce 10 minutes before they see the customer, right? Down here is this example of commerce. Why is that shaping? Train? Yeah, Good, I just thought it was my too much coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, God, this is really strong coffee. Okay, so is it train? Good, that explains a lot. I feel so much better now. Americans are paranoid about everything. <laughs> okay, so here's an example of Illy Coffee. They're outside the firewall. They're social networking, portal, and smart commerce driven together. Okay? Uh, up here is Slumberland, which is social analytics, social networking, social content, and social integration together. So <coughs> what they would normally do is you see this, the, the ad campaigns, the TV ads, the radio ads, the print ads, they used to stick it on a DVD and send it out to everyone. By the time they got it on DVD, it was already two weeks late. So they generated a delivery mechanism, a secure portal user experience with social capabilities to deliver the latest enterprise content management right to the, the end user. And then, obviously, right here, this is our internal W3 at IBM, the largest internet in the world. And we leverage social and, and analytics and content and integration. Of course, all of these have a mobile interface huge aspect. So the idea is these, these building blocks that you see here are coming from that framework. So our strategy is to look at, at bringing that framework together to deliver the right value to the customer. So let's go back to this idea of social business for a second. Now, I've seen connections deployed in a corporation as small as 18 people all the way to the size of IBM. I've seen it both on the inside and the outside of the firewall. So this is, you don't have to be a massive corporation to participate in this. You, you literally need to think about, and the writing is already on the wall, it's already on the wall, that the way people collaborate, the way people communicate has changed. Let me ask you a question. How many people here have a, a child with a cell phone? Hey, keep your hands up. When's the last time you get an email from them? Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Okay. So there's a little experiment that we do where I show a doorbell and I ask everyone in the audience to raise their hand and press the doorbell. And everyone takes their index finger and presses the doorbell. You ask your child to do it and they do it with their thumb. Why? Because of the texting and the phones and the gadgets and the things and the, and the, and the tweet, tweeting that they do. It's actually part of their DNA to use their thumb. Why do you think the iPad has a thumb keyboard now? Right? So, you have to look at social business as a way to attract good talent. You have to look at social business as a way to remove barriers. I look at social business as if it was fluid, as if, as if it was water. And I'm gonna talk about that later. To me, social is fluid. It's organic, it's living and breathing. It's opposite of everything that we know today. 
Your org chart is probably the number one thing that holds you back, is your org chart. Because information flows in one of two directions, up and down. Requests go up and bad news comes down. Right? So information goes up and down, but information should go left, right, up, down, diagonal, 360 degrees. It should be flowing from one side of the corporation to the other and not be held up to back that org chart. So that's one reason why social is really taken off is because you're removing some of those major barriers that drive innovation and drive communication. Here's an example of a social intranet. You can't tell when one part of the product begins and the other one ends by design. There's part connects it in there. There's part social networking in there. There's part real-time communications in there. So it's a combination, a hybrid, and that's the idea. Especially, think about new employees. At IBM, before we put our social net intranet in, we had 5,600 domain names. You couldn't find anything. You had to know the guy's name over in the ThinkPad division to find the ThinkPad stuff, right? So using this as a way to protect the end user, both an internal employee or an external customer from your business journey. As we went from 123 HR applications down to 16, we protected everyone from that business journey. <coughs> and our social internet was the way we did that. So think of it this way, we're gonna be launching a, a, a suite that can be purchased called the Collaboration Suite. And you'll notice that it's made up of connections, it's made up of the Connections Content Manager, which I'll talk about. It's made up of same time advanced and same time SUT Lite. So you'll notice right into the same time business card is a little telephone. So I can initiate <coughs> telephone calls directly from there. Outside, you'll see a great uh, product demonstration of SUT Lite and other things woven right into that user experience. Okay? You'll notice that by logging on from the browser, I'm automatically logged on. So this is just an example of a solution woven together uh, that drives that capability. The role of your desktop is massive in, in the success of this solution, okay? So you'll notice here I've got this intranet, whatever it might be, the domino applications, the X pages drive a huge aspect of this. At IBM, we've actually divided our domino apps into three types. Tier one are global apps, they're actually X-Page enabled and they're delivered by the portal. Tier two are kind of geo-based. They're notes only, they will not be converted and they're delivered by the portal. And then we have local ones which will never be converted, they'll be notes only, also delivered by the portal. So for example, if I lose my badge, my IBM badge, I go to the notes launcher and it will note that I'm a North American employee and fire me directly into the North American Domino app, right into my notes client, and do the workflow, submit it back in and get my badge. All right, so part of the strategy is to use that portal technology, that internet technology to deliver key applications, whether they're X pages enabled or not. And so you have, on the left-hand side, you've got three things that are actually designed specifically to drive adoption. I get asked that all the time. How do I increase adoption rate? It's very simple. You have to put it where the eyeballs are. There are corporations that spend a tremendous amount of money putting the cereal box right at eye level. They, create, they pay more money to put their box there than the people that put the box at the bottom by design. Because they, they want to, they know that at eye level, they'll get a greater increase in adoption or uptake of, on that product. So that's something you have to think about. You have to think of social and collaboration as a service not as a product, it's a service, and it should be woven directly into the user experience. So Notes 9 is a massive, massive catalyst to driving the social participation, so is Outlook. One of the things you should get away from, you should get from today, is a very non-religious discussion. A non-religious discussion between Microsoft and uh, us. I've heard customers who are diehard Microsoft customers say, wow, you guys actually integrate better with Microsoft than Microsoft does. But most customers are saying that. And when you see what we've done with Outlook, 
when you've seen what we've done with Office, when you've seen what we've done with Windows Explorer, you're like, yeah, actually you do. We do integrate better. So we want to make those part of the service. We want to make it so easy to participate. I'm either on my mobile device, I'm in my email client, doesn't matter which one. I'm over here, and what I'm doing, I'm integrating. I'm participating in that situation, okay? So these are huge catalysts to drive that particular capability. So starting with your Active Directory, your desktop single sign-on, your Microsoft Office, your Microsoft Outlook, your SharePoint, your Windows Explorer, these are all clients. Every one of these is a client to our strategy. <coughs> right? and including things like Smart Cloud. So when I'm inside my Windows Explorer, I actually have an icon for the cloud and an icon for the internal. Right? So I can just take files, I'm like, oh, I want to share this with customers, I'm going to drag and drop it over to the to this cloud version, I'm gonna drag and drop some of the files over here, I'm drag and dropping, I'm participating, I'm right clicking, I'm changing the access control. It's easy to participate when it's that clean, okay? So let's move on to notes, the notes nine client. Um, how many people here know when I say activity string what that means? Okay, some people do, some people don't, okay. So, one of the things that we're going to show you in the Notes 9 demonstration, I'm going to switch over here to Notes 9. So this is my Notes 9 uh, Mac client. And I've got my uh, mail down the left and my sender here, and I've got a whole set of applications on the right. And you'll notice that one of the things I have here is my activity stream update. Okay. So the activity stream is your wall, it's your board, etc. So a couple things I want to talk about. One is our strategy is to actually take that business stream, or to take that activity stream and turn it into a business stream where I can integrate other applications. I can integrate X pages workflow applications. I can integrate SAP. I can integrate a lot of different things into that activity stream. That's number one. So we take the activity stream and we make it a business stream. That's number one. Number two is we do this thing called embedded experiences. And I have to tell you, it is a game changer. An absolute game changer in terms of how easy it is for me to participate in that particular process. It's unbelievable how easy that is. So tomorrow at eight o'clock, I'll be doing the notes, uh, messaging and uh, collaboration strategy, which I'll go into a deeper uh, demonstration at that time. But I wanted to just show you what I mean by participating. Okay, so one example here is uh, I see uh, I see a name here. I'm just going to hover my mouse over a uh, a name, and I get a social business card, and that it's using my microblogging, and it's using the status here, and I can pivot off of, off of this and go and get Chris's files. The things I love about the business card is a self service model. I'm not in the email for business. That's not what I get paid for. But that used to be what I used to be asking all the time. Chris, can I have? Chris, do you have that? I want that all the time. And so instead, they just click on files and they do self-service. I don't even get, I'm, I'm the middleman, I'm taken out of the middle, I love it, okay? Uh, but I get to see the, the business card and that information, so that's really nice. That's out of the box integration with that business card, and I get to see information about the title, their status, and things of that nature. And then I see over here uh, someone like Ted, I'm gonna right click on Ted and say, you know what? actually invite him to my social network. So with one click, you know, I think I'm gonna start working with Ted. I think we're gonna start doing some stuff together, so I'm just gonna do right click add to network and immediately invite him to my social network. Does that mean, so we're using the notes client as a catalyst into what we're doing. And then what you'll notice is <coughs> I can get these emails, all right? And here's an example of an email Here's an example of an email. And I get this particular email, and, and you'll see that it's loading. And what it's going to do is it's going to go over to the application, and it's going to embed the experience directly in here. And now I can actually see that Reinhardt has delivered an application. I can unlike it. I can follow it. I can add comments. I can reshare it. Oh, my team would love this. But let me show you the before and after picture because you don't really get the value until you see the before picture, right? When I was really heavy and now I'm really thin. 
right? The before and after picture. So let me actually let me actually show you what you would normally get today. You would normally get this. You would just get a notification. So what we're doing is we're taking email and we're taking social and we're making notification to active participation. That's huge. Thank you. Anything that you like, I'm personally responsible for. <laughs> Anything you don't like, I have nothing to do with. Okay? So think of, that's what I mean by moving from social to business strength. So that means in your email, you can approve SAP workflow. That means in your email, you can actually participate socially. You can reshare. That means you get X page domino apps delivered to your email as a notification and as one click participation. Do you see what I mean by notification to active participation? Does that make sense what I mean by that? It's huge, it's a game changer. And it's actually dramatically increased by participation because it's so easy to do the right thing. So here's an email from Ufi, and Ufi is, let's see, in this particular case, he's inviting me to join his network. So this is going out to the application, and it's gonna embed that particular application with the rights that I have to it. In this particular case, it's going to go grab um, uh, a workflow notification. Okay. Come up here and try a different one. I'll try this one. So here's a, here is a, uh, a, mi a micro blog that I did that I said, hey, listen, you know, hey guys, you can listen to the sales talks and the tech talks, but you know, what I do is I actually use iTunes and subscribe to those as podcasts. So just cut, copy, and paste a bunch of these things into your uh, iTunes and subscribe to them, and then I did a bunch of at mentions to what I consider to be my, my tippers. Because when I make that micro blog post, I'm not only my network sees it, but everyone in those people's network sees it. So I'm leveraging this idea of jumping from network to network. Think about why a YouTube video goes from one to a million hits in three days. It has nothing to do with email. Zero. It has nothing to do with email. It has to do with going from one person's network to the other, and somewhere along that network, it hit a tipper. It hit a movie star, it hit, it hit an influencer, somewhere along, it hits something, and boom, it goes from to a million hits. Why aren't you doing that on the inside of your firewall? Why aren't you doing that in your business? I know you have influencers and tippers in your corporation. You need to leverage that idea that you could collaborate and leverage their influence to help your particular project, okay? So I'll give you an example here. Um, one of the ideas that I came up with is this idea of, of amplification. How do I amplify something? So within about uh, less than 90 seconds, I created uh, just a, a badge and all of a sudden it started to take off. Like everyone's like, I want my own badge that I installed Notes 9 at, at IBM. And it, all of a sudden it amplified the message. It amplified that particular message. And you'll notice that you know, it's got 22 likes. I can actually make comments on it. It's a whole, whole bunch of comments on there type situation. So the strategy here is to make the Notes client a catalyst to participating. Whether it's an SAP workflow, whether it's you know, SharePoint documents that are being launched, whether it's other things of that nature, right? The notes client becomes a catalyst to participation. One click. We'll sh I'll show you more of my demo tomorrow uh, on, uh, on this, right? So in a way, what we're saying is email, the future of email is social. And I have to be honest that my email has come down dramatically. Because what I will say to people is I'll, I'll ask, I'll answer your question, but on, on the thread, don't email me. Just post the question and I'll answer out there. Because I get that same question five times. Let me answer it out here. Okay. So the future of, of email is social. And as I do my job, so I have a kind of a day in the life I'll do tomorrow. As I do my day in the life tomorrow and show you how I use this, it's all blended together, right? So as I'm sitting here talking with Jack, uh, we actually escalated directly to a video chat as we did this, and the beautiful thing is it makes me look thinner, it gives me more hair, more hair, right? Yeah, you get the joke tomorrow, don't worry. Um, so th this is how I use this uh, on a daily basis. So I actually have four ways I access my email and calendar. 
One is through the rich client. The other one is through my iNotes, which you'll, I'll show you tomorrow at 8 o'clock. You'd be blown away by what you can see and do in the iNotes. Just stunning. Absolutely stunning. And then also within the connections mail. And this has been very powerful. The connections mail supports both Outlook and, exchange, uh, Outlook and uh, Notes, or Exchange and, and uh, Domino Mail, to be exact. Uh, and then also through my, my mobile devices. And those are the four places that I access my mail. So I have the choice uh, everywhere I am to do that. Okay, so let me go back. I want to start with the connections mail. So this is connections 4.5, and I'm just going to hover my mouse over my inbox. And so I get access to that, and I can just hover my mouse over these, and I'm going to open up this particular email here. I might have to re-authenticate in a second here. Sending a link to a file in email, they're participating automatically in the process. They're automatically added to the access control of that particular file. Right? And then when you look at Heather's email, you'll now notice that the first three of them are the ones that I just shared with her on the email. Right? So this is just by sending links, you're participating very, very quickly in that process. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so the whole idea of the email was to be a catalyst directly into what I was participating in, make it super simple, super easy. The other thing you'll notice is the same time uh, look and feel, the same time nine stuff that we've been working on. Um, you'll notice a very powerful focus on audio and video in this capability. Um, you'll see some of that demonstration outside. Um, so here's an example of an e-meeting and the new look and feel. I can click on the different participants. I can see who's speaking. I can actually have what I call the, uh, um, the, the multi-person uh, video look and feel versus switching back and forth between the, the speaker. Uh, and it's actually a, a great job in that situation. All right, let's talk about connections 4.5. So how do I explain connections to people? Well, one is I start with this concept of Sunday to Monday, as I said over here. We have these capabilities. And that I look at it as three different frames. Client as a person in the network I'm involved with. Then the next lever, lever up is the individual. And they have a different, different set of services like a blog and wiki and files. The file capability in IDN is so popular that if you multiply the number of files that we share socially by its size, by how many times it gets downloaded, it's six petabytes we did not put through the email system. If you don't know what a petabyte is, ask the person to your right. Okay? It's quite large. So people have started to realize that we can do this. The other big thing that we've realized, that I have realized, that other IDMers have realized, is that at one time in my career, I felt the more that I kept things to myself, the more valuable I was. It's the other way around. The more I share, the more valuable I am. And so this has been helping me. It's very difficult to create a digital reputation when you keep things everything to yourself. So this is part of people's career strategy is to leverage the individual selling capabilities to share. 
And then you have a level of, of team capabilities here, like activities and communities and, and other things that drive this. We have a huge ecosystem of business partners that add value on top of this. Okay? And then obviously integration with the Microsoft stack and the entire IBM stack right, to drive that adoption capabilities. So let's talk about the business needle for a second here. And this is one of my favorite slides because it, it has a couple of messages. One at the bottom, you'll see kind of five things. One is the five, what I consider the five things at times that hold corporations back. Number one is that divisions don't talk to other divisions. That a corporation can be very siloed. Does that make sense? How many people feel your corporations like that? Okay, it's time to be honest, folks. Okay? Right, to be very siloed, so information stays within the, within the silo. The org chart, we talked about that. The taxonomy is static. Email can be very selfish. Right? It's almost antisocial if it's used the wrong way. If you use it the right way, it's very social. If you use it the wrong way, it's very antisocial. Think about it this way. When you leave the corporation, what happens to your mail file? Because archive is gone, no one ever gets any value from that whatsoever, right? So you ever get that person that you send, you get a, you get this, you get this email that has like 25 megabytes worth of presentations on it, and then someone says thank you back with all the presentations on the side. You ever get that person, right? If the guy that crosses arms is probably guilty of that, you know? So it can be very abusive, and then this idea, this trying to dramatic focus on documents. Documents is a currency, but it shouldn't be the focus. I never got a raise from a spreadsheet. I never got a promotion from a spreadsheet. So the focus on documents can be, can be too much sometimes. Right? So you have to expand that. Social is about people, not about documents. Documents might be the currency in which things are exchanged at times, but it's not the focus. And so you have this layer down here the number one thing I want to say today, this is the number one thing, is you have to use social to drive your business initiatives. It is not about blogs and wikis. If you're having, if I ask you the question, what is your social business strategy? And you say to me, I've got blogs and wikis, you are three years behind. You're at least three years behind in your strategy. This is a brand new way of working. Every single customer that I've seen become a social business have, has announced a new way of working. They branded it. They, want, they marketed it. They sold it. They have things hanging from their, their banner, from their, from their lobby saying, welcome to the new way of working. If you're down at that feature function level, you're at least three years behind. You have to think about blogs and wikis are a way to support what you're trying to do and that's change your business initiative. The other day, I was in Europe, and I said, at American Airlines, what is your official status on the Ash Cloud? Boom. Within less than two minutes, I got a response from American Airlines. Two minutes, less than two minutes. I have the screenshots to prove it. Why did I choose that way to communicate with American Airlines? It's because I needed speed. I need speed, and that's why I did it. So think about why you're running your business initiatives. Wouldn't you love a little more speed? Wouldn't you love a little more, go from one side of the corporation to the other faster than it did before? So we have four examples I'm gonna bring up. One is, we have an initiative at IBM called Blue Thanks. How do other IBMers give other IBMers a thank you? Hey, you helped me out, thank you, I'm gonna give you a Blue Thanks, and that Blue Thanks had an 11% adoption rate. So no one gets a raise or a bonus on 11% adoption rate. We put it into the social and it shot up 75% adoption rate within three months. When, now, when I give you a blue thanks, it's actually wrote, written to your wall. The application does it to your wall. So now your network gets notified that you've been given a blue thanks. And so the message has been amplified and all of a sudden, that was my aha moment, is I can use other people's networks to amplify what I need to get done, things that I need to do. And people start to catch on to that. 
Then you have this idea of the product managers who literally had to do one at a time. One person, one customer, one person. You know, and all of a sudden, we actually put that all into the cloud, and now we have a way to integrate and collaborate with over 300 business partners and customers on what they want to rank next. So we actually use an ideation blog to help them decide what comes next. Before, it was a very, very small number of people. Now they can amplify their capabilities. Industry sellers, we had a 6% to 85%. The CIO's office originally had a bring your own device to work strategy. And so we, because originally we could only deliver it to North America, we said we gotta do a better job of that. We gotta do it globally for everyone. So 50% of all IBMers work from home, I'm one of those. So I don't have a, an office to go into to get technical support. Right now, you notice, besides the monkey here, I'm 100% I'm Mac. I'm 100% Apple at IBM. Mostly because I'm in a midlife crisis, but that's a completely <laughs> different question. <laughs> it was either steel tip cowboy boots or the Mac. I think I made the right decision. <laughs> so the office of the CIO allows us to bring iPads, iPhones, Androids, other tablets, Windows, Linux, and Mac situation. When you pick up the telephone, and you call the 800 number at IBM to get technical support, you get help on two things, BlackBerry and Windows XP. <laughs> why, why does everyone laugh when I say that? All right, they're probably the two things I don't want. Maybe a BlackBerry 10, I'd be, I'd be interested in that, but not, not, not Windows XP. So how does IBM deliver a world-class global initiative called Open Computing and Bring Your Own Device to Work when the tech support on phone is BlackBerry and Windows XP? I don't get how to do it. We leverage the collective intelligence of IBM. I get better technical support from the Mac community at IBM than I do from Apple itself. Should I upgrade to the next version? Should I upgrade to Line? Should I upgrade to the next version of operating system? No, 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 no. The IBM uh, VPN doesn't work on that. You, should, you just don't do it yet. Okay, now officially you can do it. Right, so I, I get help. We get help from three types of people. We get help from experts. An expert is usually someone that's been dedicated, who's been certified, they've gone to school, they, they are a developer of some sort. Right, then you have kind of the natural champions, which I am, I'm a natural champion. And then you have this idea of, of the geeks and the dorks. Now the difference between the natural champion and the dork and the geek is the geek is the one that sleeps outside the Apple store before the iPhone 5 comes out. That's how you know the difference between the two, okay? So we leveraged, again, those tippers, those influencers to drive a world-class successful initiative uh, in that situation, global one. So do you see the difference? It's not about wikis and blogs, it's about solving major business problems and making them successful this way. And so what happens is you see the fluid and all of a sudden it's not about sharing, it's about organic nature, it's not about org charts, it's about network relationships, it's not about taxonomies, it's about folksonomies, it's not about emails, it's about conversations, it's not about storing documents in an F drive, it's about sharing equal value. So this layer down here is a very static, <coughs> hard-coded layer while social on top of this is a more fluid, organic, living, breathing layer. And that's the difference. That's the difference. Okay. So embedded experiences is a universal capability. This is going back to a business inbox, if you will. So here's an example of an XPage application. So the workflow inside the XPages. Here's SAP, and I can prove my SAP workflow. Over here is a Connexa. So the, the new job has been posted. So as a hiring manager, it securely gets put onto my wall and I can participate, I get notified. Again, notification to active participation, right? It also works inside of mobile. So embedded experiences works inside of Notes 9. It works inside of iNotes. It works inside of Connections Mail. And it works inside of mobile. So it's a universal <coughs> uh, solution across the board. And then you have another example here of Office 365 documents in the cloud from SharePoint dropping onto my activity stream through a business partner solution. So you can really start to increase the notification to active participation and to that of the business stream. Okay? So 
Okay, so let's show you the connections 4.5 demonstration. Let me slide over here to this one. All right, so one of the big things that we have in connections 4.5 is a world-class enterprise document library set of services. It's called Connections Content Manager. Okay? How many people here are quicker customers? Okay, this is your roadmap. This is your roadmap from Quicker to the Connections platform. We will make licensing very easy for you. We will also give you a migration tool to take documents out of your existing Quicker libraries and move them over to the content in the Connection Content Manager libraries. All right, that is the roadmap. You don't have to get on it right away. You can stay on Quicker as long as you want, but this is where this is where we're heading. So from a, from a license perspective, we will make customers whole. From a functionality perspective, there's a lot of overlap, and this is the direction we're heading. So as I said earlier, we had this idea of personal file sharing, and now we move to more of an enterprise document file sharing. So one of the things you'll notice is this idea of nested folders, and being able to see documents in different statuses. So you'll see this one is in review, and this one is in review, and that one's a draft. So I can literally just hover my mouse over an existing document and it will show me where it is, what reviewers need to take care of. So I can see, this is different than I'm just gonna share a file, I'm gonna actually put some workflow onto this. And I'm also gonna put some metadata capabilities on this, right? So if I come down here, I actually have two different document libraries, totally two different ones. I'm gonna click on the contracts. That's gonna drop the contracts in there for a second. And then when I upload a file specifically to that, you'll notice it's going to pop right into the metadata. So I can say for every library, you have to put this metadata in. And it's associated with this following workflow to put it into the system. This will show up in the activity screen. So if I'm one of the approvers, this shows up in my stream, I click on it, I can hit approve right from that perspective. So you get a very powerful uh, mechanism uh, to drive and you can also choose to change which, you can also say, you know what, I can decide which document type this is. You can have it locked in, or you can decide it's open. Is this a contract? Is this an FAQ? Is it, you know, is it, is it a request for information, a request for other things? And you have a certain set of workflow that metadata is required for that capability. So this is the direction that we're heading in uh, from a kind of an enterprise document library set of services. Let me go back over here and talk about some of the other new features. One you'll notice is it has a it has a new look and feel to it, right? It has a new uh, capability, and you also notice that I have this. I have what I love is my one of my favorite features is this idea of the at mention. Being able to at mention anyone uh, is very very powerful, and I have a couple ways of doing that. One is I can actually do that directly to status update of this community. So I can actually just say, I'm, I'm gonna update something, but only to the community. I don't want it to my entire network to see it, just this community can see it. I have the option of doing it globally. I also have the option of uh, sharing uh, at this level up here. So it's gonna, it's gonna pop up this particular box here, and I can do a status update or share a file if I want. And based on that status update, I can participate in the situation. Slow. Here we go. So I can do it to everyone. I can do it to a community. Okay. It did show up once. Notifications we talked about. 
Um, and then here's an example of me typing in uh, the at mention for Samantha and having that particular uh, concept show up. So it's a great way to kind of send information and notify people and leverage that particular network. Okay. Let's go into the mobile demo that won't crash. So this is my real iPad that I use. And I've got a bunch of functionality. One, I use Traveler. So I have the mail and the calendar built in, plus the companion product, which allows me to create and read encrypted email. So it's the only vendor that does encrypted email on iOS devices. Right? So I leverage that. I have the same time meetings uh, for internal. I have my cloud meetings. I have my same time, my connections. And IBM has deployed an endpoint manager to control all these bring your device to work uh, applications. So it's a management tool that allows us to do that. Uh, my other brand new one that just came out is to do So I can uh, participate. So you get that free off of the uh, catalog today, the, the to do's. I have a work light application. So a work light application in this particular case is half portal, half mobile but I get to leverage all things that are native to that device. The GPS location of that device, the camera on that device, the contacts on that device, right? So that's one example, so that's the big picture. Let me go to my, my uh, inbox here. One thing you'll notice is my daily update for connections. This is my favorite feature because it allows me to not spend a lot of time in connection. I follow this person, I follow that person, I join that community, I follow the, the projects I kind of want to keep an eye on. And then every day I get an email that says, this is what's changed on those files. This is what that person you're following added to the network. So it's a summary of kind of that digital trail and things I'm most interested in. So I get that in my inbox. I have an attachment and with one click, I can literally say, you know what, share that in a meeting or open in connections or of course open in wildfire. Right? So I can literally take that attachment and with one to two clicks, share that directly into the system. Make it really easy for me to share that file with my team. Right? And then here I have my iPad, which has the built-in soft phone, which you'll actually see outside here in the demonstration area. There is no phone on my iPad, but with one click, I click on Carl Wall's name, and the SUT soft phone dialed Carl, and for two hours, he and I were going over what were the settings, I he was showing me screenshots of stuff, I, settings I needed to change to make things work in a demo, and for two hours, I had no phone, I just had the iPad and the Wi-Fi access. And so I used the built-in soft phone. So that means we're initiating the, the soft capabilities directly into there. And the same thing with the iPhone. You'll see that demo on site also. Where as I make that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight phone calls, eight phone calls average about almost a dollar, dollar a call savings. For those who have a 13 year old daughter, that would be a lot of money. <laughs> right? So I'm initiating a telephone call directly from my device as a soft phone, and it's saving IDN a tremendous amount of money. Right, so that's part of the direction we're heading in with that capability. And then also, if I wanted to actually take that and not just chat and not just call, but actually turn it into a video call, I can do that also. Okay. And you know, in terms of the mobile capabilities, one of our biggest things that we're doing, and it's one of my favorites, is this thing that we call responsive design. And responsive design is a way to build the UI once for, let's say, in this particular case, a portal. And it will dynamically change the look and the feel. This is a Danish bank that's live in production right now. And you'll notice it's got interesting stuff on the bottom, it's got stuff on the right, it's got a navigation across the top. And watch what happens if I choose to just slide it a little bit. All of a sudden it says, you're no longer a browser, you are now an iPad. And so if I change the orientation of the iPad, and I'll show you this over here in the, in the, in the uh, WebStreet portal demonstration, if I change the orientation, it will change the look and feel. So at a certain point it goes, okay, uh, I need to take out the, take out the graphics uh, and change that uh, and make things a little bit different. And then as I start to get a little bit slower over here, now, okay, now I'm iPhone or not, I'm Android device, right? 
right? So this is out of the box functionality called responsive design. And you can see how, how nice this is in terms of the speed, right? At a certain point, take out that graphic, right? This is what I mean by exceptional customer experience. Does that make sense? As we say in Boston, this is wicked awesome. <laughs> So that's built into the user experience and a very powerful concept there. Okay, the other thing you can do is actually modify the connections user experience so when you download the social app, you'll notice that we were able to add third party applications like Bunchball and a quick link to the instant messaging or other parts of the business. So you can modify it because in some customer deployments, they don't call it files, they call it something else. They don't call it blogs, they call it something else. So when you launch a branded solution, you want to be able to give it that its own name, and we're able to do that. And again, don't forget that that embedded experience works also in mobile device. So here is an example of a fraud alert showing up in, in the stream. So I have my I'm following information. I've got the, the data on the left hand side. Um, I'm participating in the different uh, communities. I can see the different services. I can follow, stop, follow. I can participate in that community. Um, in this particular case, I'm actually voting on the ideation concepts they have. So I'm able to vote. My biggest use of it is adding people to the access control file. That's my personal big use of, of connections on the mobile devices that give people secure access. Then we start heading to this idea of files and synchronizing files. So not only can I download files, I can also start to synchronize them across my devices. So that means from my Windows Explorer, I drag and drop files to a folder. Those are automatically synchronized, very much like a Dropbox model, but secure. So we're offering a file sync capability. Now, don't forget that when you install this on an iPad, and if you have a password, which is IBM's requirement for our deployment, you're actually encrypted. All that information is encrypted on that mobile device. And if you lose the iPad or something goes wrong, the administrators can send a wipeout request that will wipe out all that information. All right. So that's out-of-the-box functionality. But it's really going to be nice to be able to synchronize your files. So when I synchronize it to my Windows Explorer and then I throw up my iPhone, it's boom, it's synchronized right to my iPhone, to my iPad, and my other particular devices. It's going to be one of my favorite top features I'm going to be using. And so boom, those are the four ones that add the file sync uh, capability. And then obviously we're extending the idea of IBM uh, Docs, which is our web editors. So not only into the browser, but also into the mobile devices. So IBM Docs would be another thing you can install on top of connections that allow you to co-edit files, allow you to not have a Microsoft Office or a Symfony installed. And, let, and create and modify and co-edit and co-collaborate around documents. And you'll now notice that if I have this particular presentation, I can say edit in IBM Docs, and it will fire up the IBM Docs UI, and I can basically go offline with this. I can actually see the presentation if I wanted to. I can see other people's uh, comments they're making on, on this capability. And then it's tough to see because of the way the screen is, but there's two different people, and you can see that there's two different colors. So I get, when, as I'm typing my changes, the other person sees that particular changes in that particular color, in that color. Right. So that's an example of seeing which people are kind of co-editing the document at the same time. And then as we go through this mobile capability, we want to kind of head towards a really nice user experience, uh, and that is this idea of a magazine style. How many people use Flipboard? Right. So imagine social connections meets Flipboard. And that's what you get here. Very, very powerful user experience. You're sliding through, you're looking at trending, you're looking at different things, you have a nice, like, so we're spending a lot of time and money on mobile. There are actually, there's a concept we call mobile first, where we actually build it in mobile before it actually gets in the browser version. Right, so you'll see a lot of those features and functions that we go along here. Then, we took it one step further and said, okay, Everything you can do with a keyboard and a mouse is, ex is a, exposed as a REST-based API connection. So a business partner took, the only way I can describe it is a massive iPhone, a massive iPad, and it's a table, and they wrote a UI on top of connections. 
And so you'll see, here's the hand. And what they did is they took a meeting and they said, now move it over to same time. And actually, as they project the meeting, it's being projected in the same time meeting. And then they said, okay, well, I'm gonna take the people from Connections and I'm gonna drag and drop them into a here and I'm going to share data. And I'm gonna drag a file onto on Samantha and drag a file onto Nicole and then I'm gonna pinch and zoom information. And so literally they're, they're, they're writing the UI on top of Connections. Right? This is a powerful way of, of, of being able to control that and, and leverage that capability. Okay, let's go to the last section. This is my favorite section because it's how IBM is leveraging this capability. So I said earlier that most social businesses have a launched, branded, marketed example that IBM would call being a digital IBMer. And under the digital IBMer brand is how, you, how, how are you protecting customer data? How are you being more social? How are you leveraging this work from home net, uh, strategy? So we're leveraging this to support the way that IBM works. And so I have two favorite statements. One is Steve Mills calls it, how do I, how do I harvest our collective intelligence across IBM and our IBM ecosystem? So he realizes that this is important. And then Waldowski Berger says, information turning into flows of new information. That's where I kind of got that idea of water. That social is about flowing of information uh, versus static. Right? So those are my, those are my two favorites. So, Jenny Rometty is our CEO, and she's 100% bought in. She realizes that she's going to leverage social as her strategy. So every single quarter, she generates a video, a video blog. And that's how she communicates. She doesn't write an email anymore. I don't get emails from Jenny anymore, I get video blogs. And all of a sudden, this idea of video blogs has really expanded within IBM. So this is the way she does it. And all of a sudden, everyone else starts building their video blogs. All the executives start doing it. It's amazing. And even here in Australia, we have uh, the general manager of Australia is very big into video blogging capabilities. Right? So the difference between these three is that these guys have their own professional video crew. Right? I don't have my own professional video crew. So I just use the iPhone or the iPad, and I hit record, and I can build my video blogs that way. So I actually realized I can communicate my thoughts and ideas better through a five minute video than I can sending a seven paragraph email. Right. So here is Francis's wall and Jenny Rometty right on his wall. Congratulations, you've been recognized as one of the best of IBM in 2011. So she's actually writing on their wall that you were just named best of IBM. And I gotta tell you, that sparked a huge reaction within IBM. It's the same amount of tests, it's the same amount of work, but the impact is 50 times greater this way than through email. Not that anything's wrong with email, is that you can't engage your employees unless you engage them in a real, transparent, social way. So she realizes she's a better leader because she's behaving more socially. Okay. So here we said earlier, these are again all real examples. So Laura Wolf says, I'm as smart as the expert just moments later. She's the one that says, I'm as smart as you but five minutes later. Right? And then uh, Joe Baxter says, uh, while I was sleeping, my network was working for me. So he posted a question on his wall, and by the time he woke up, Europe had already answered the question. So he's loving the fact that that's happening. Patrick Lyons is responding to something that I posted. He says, tripped on this knowledge nugget. So he called it a knowledge nugget, which I thought was interesting. Uh, helped the customer right away and made me look like a god. That's hard for him. Patrick does not look like a god most often. He's a good guy, but that's hard to do. Right? So think of think about that aha moment as he, he discovered he discovered the power of this. Right? That's the key, is that aha moment drives that power. So you have to look at it in different ways as to why each layer wants to do it. Why should I participate? Well, at the employee level, 
it's very, it's very selfish. The reason why this has been very successful is it's very selfish reasons why they do it. If I gave you like another thing to do, you're like, oh my God, I have too much to do as it is. Don't give me another thing to do just because you want me to. Give me something that helps me get my job done faster, and I'll do it. So think about the file sharing capabilities that we talked about, right? Let me see if I can quickly show you uh, an example of mine here. I go over to my profile here and go to my files. This is my real, this is my IBM Core uh, network here. And I'm going to sort by most downloads. And in this particular case, I have an iPhone, iPad one that has about 1,100 downloads. Let me go into that and show you why um, this was my, in my particular case, my aha moment. So originally, I just shared that file with these 15 people. It went from 15 to 1,100 downloads, and I didn't have to do anything. <coughs> because when Bobby shared with this guy, and that guy shared with this guy, it, all of a sudden, organically, it just grew, 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 and every time you share it, you give a value. So they were giving that file a value every time they reshared it. And all of a sudden, it had an organic layer. And all of a sudden, my network was actually helping me get my job done better and faster. So when I upload a new version, all 1,000 people get notified this is the version of it. There's a single version of the truth, right? Single version of the truth. So this is a powerful way of, of leveraging that. HR manager. I use this as a manager. Oh, you would like you like to get a job, you'd like to get a promotion, then you should start following these particular four people that you'd like to be like. And you should also increase your digital reputation because it'd be easier for me as a manager to get you your next job if people actually know who you are. Right? So I use it to be a better manager. And then we talked about the line of business solutions, right? The blue thanks capability, the Apple community, the smarter planet, the smarter healthcare, the the other, so we literally run our business, our business initiatives are run on top of this platform. They're very successful. In a lot of ways, our communities in connections have replaced some of the pages in our portal. They become the page in the portal. Okay. Then, obviously we talked about the executives. They realize there's a better way to communicate and be a better leader this way. And then why does I even care? Like one reason is this. So here is a business card from Carol Jones, and, it, and it's, you probably can't read this, but it says, she is an IBM fellow. It's the highest level of distinction you get at IBM. And from a technical perspective, you can't get any higher than a IBM fellow. So she's an IBM fellow. And she also is an e-goddess. I don't know if you can read that, but it says e-goddess, which is a more difficult title to get. Now she was handpicked by the Nobel laureates in Stockholm, Sweden, to fly over to Stockholm and to speak to all the Nobel laureates about social business and Web 2.0. And she was literally maybe top five in the world on this topic. And I get to follow her at IBM. And what she shared was a month ahead of what I'd read the press. She was, she was like my super internal boom. Right? What she was sharing was cutting edge stuff. And she and I loved to follow her. It was amazing what I would learn from Carol as the thought leader, right? And I would get this fantastic information, and I was as smart as her. But five minutes later, it was amazing. And then I hovered my mouse, and it says this person is no longer an active user. She had retired two years ago, but everything she's ever shared is still available to me. That's why I do cares. Right? It's about keeping that really powerful knowledge in the corporation even though you go. Her mail file is gone, all that stuff is gone, but her digital trail is still available to me. So the number one reason why I'm social is it makes me a better IBM. Hands down. Makes me a better manager, makes me a better executive, makes me a better salesperson, makes me a better leader, makes me a better IBM. -er. That's why I do it. Not because I'm forced to do it or it's the next trend. It literally does make my job dramatically easier. So here is a community that actually has a community manager, a librarian associated with this. 
It has almost 60,000 members in this community. It's the IBM software community. This is how the senior executives deliver their content to IBM to this community. It's a very powerful way of delivering that value. And so when I get an email, you'll notice it says bracket IBM software community close bracket. I'm actually getting an email from the membership of that community. So it's not an email for email sake, it's actually an email from the community. And so this is the announcement that we purchased work like. And so I could go read Alistair's blog and what it means, I could read Danny's blog, I could read the, the five different versions as to why the work life was powerful uh, acquisition from five different perspectives. All done in blogs, et cetera, right? So here's one, it says, rethinking my sharing strategy, opening up for public inside of IBM, view many of my files and presentations that were private. They belong to IBM. Why am I keeping them, uh, keeping them closed? Closed cold, I don't know what that means, but. Oh, he's being held. Being held, yeah, he's keeping them inside his mail file. Right, so all of a sudden, his stream is share, 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 share. All of a sudden, that light bulb went off that I'm more valuable to IBM the more I share. So I said earlier that I had this, I, I had a group name in my address book called the Tippers List. Right? And so someone, you know, so this person has 830 people in their network, 344, 517, 659. So when I mention them or do things, I'm actually tapping into their network. So it's not scientific. That's why it's fluid. It's, it, you know, email is like mail forward, right? There's this is guarantee. In social, it's not like that. It's a little, it can be a little gray. People like black and white, it can be a little gray. Okay. So how do we launch initiatives? So communities are built around initiatives. So uh, watch videos and look at related communities and see what we're trying to, so this is the way to push out certain capabilities. Then we come to this concept of amplification. This is my favorite, favorite thing. So IBM is having this massive thing called the, the Customer Experience Jam tomorrow in the next three days. And it's the collective intelligence of IBM around how do we engage our customers better? How do we have a customer-centric engagement? And so when you register for the event, you actually get a badge. It's landed on your wall and people get to see it. So all of a sudden I see Howard and he's got his badge and actually, you know, when you're registering, you get your badge, and day one, day two, day three, each day you get a different badge to amplify the message. And they've done other things to amplify. For example, if I come out here to, the, to uh, W3, this is our portal here, you'll notice they put Jam right here at the top, right? And on our portal, the most expensive piece of political real estate in all of IBM is the center area right here, we decided to put social there for those people that don't really know social. There are IBMers that still print out their email. That's okay. But they're using social, they don't know it. And so this is a way for them to actually participate without, you know, they're afraid of writing blogs. That's what their 13 year old daughter does, it's okay. Right, everyone has a different role. Let me ask a question. How many people here use Amazon.com for uh, purchasing stuff? Right, keep your hands up. How many people here leverage the reviews and the feedback from that? Okay. How many people here have ever written a review? I've never done. I am an Amazon freak, right? I buy way too much stuff on Amazon because it's so easy, but I've never written a review. But I've changed my mind based on people's reviews. So that, even though I am so social, I just don't feel like I'm an expert to speak about the GPS system, TomTom Tom versus you know, garment. I just don't feel like I have the expertise to, to, to do that, but I'm still consuming the value of other people that do that. So everyone has a different role. It's okay in that particular sense. So here we put it into our portal as, as part of that situation. So the other day, we have this thing called Stand and Deliver, and it's a program that I'm trying to drive, and a program in which a salesperson would actually get a sticker. They, they get a physical sticker on their badge that says they did a Stand and Deliver, and they, they passed, right? And all of a sudden, I'm like, why not give them a badge virtually on connections versus the physical having to put the badge on their, their, their name thing? 
So I created a, a stand and deliver button and I started engaging uh, people. Again, I'm adding my tippers to that list. And then you'll notice, look right here, there's Sandy Carter, there's Faith Kemper, there's Bart Lottenbach, and those are the ones that are actually engaging on that person. They're giving them a bad, bad boy, a good job type situation. Then I, I showed earlier this idea of this, I installed notes nine badge. And then everyone's like, how do I get that badge on mine? Right? It's as easy as creating a microblog and adding the badge to that and publishing. It's super easy to do. But what it does is it dramatically amplifies the message, the project that you're working on. So it's, it's a powerful way of kind of solving that particular problem. And here is Alistair Rennie, our GM, doing it. Okay. Um, here's an interesting one. We decided to let the sales rep define what the agenda was for enablement versus us saying to them, this is what the agenda is for enablement. So they get, they get the vote. Number one was how to make SharePoint more social. It's the number one voted situation. Okay. So interesting uh, voting, and you'll see it says graduated, which means it's now officially made to the agenda. So we're crowdsourcing the salespeople. Say, what, what is it you want to learn about versus us thinking we know what you want to learn about? <coughs> the collective intelligence of IBM. I want you, do you think they're engaged better this way? Do you think they're participating? Do these <coughs> people love to go to Vail? You have to see them and how much they're engaged on this. When they have a voice, it changes everything, guys. Think about your kids. When they have a voice as to where they want to go to dinner, they're dramatically more engaged. You can learn a lot from your kids, right? So in how I engage the employees, this is a powerful way to give them a voice. When you're open, you gain social trust. You gain social trust when you do this stuff, okay? This is hard to read, but this is how I use it, okay? This is an activity, and everything, every line you see on here is a to-do. I have one global view of my team. I go into connections and I assign you a to-do, a you a to-do, I assign different people to-dos, and it shows up on their particular connections homepage. So they know right away what to-dos they've been assigned. I have one global view of do today. That's been checked off, that's been done. I get to see where my team is on what they're doing. So I use it to actually show and manage my team. You ever do that? You ever on a phone, you're like, hey, Ms. Steve, could you, could you follow up with X, Y, and Z? And that's all you ever get. And this way, I actually wrote it down, and so it's, it's his action item. And I get to see whether it's done or not. So it's, for me, it's for greater follow through and management of it. Again, I'm a better manager, I think, because of this. And then we actually engage the applications. So here is an example of the technology adoption program. And here's a cool item. And what I want to do is I actually want to share that item. So I click on the share to connections button and it says, yep, just post that to your board. And all of a sudden it broke to my board. So applications like Blue Thanks and other things are writing to the board and all of a sudden the the adoption of that item dramatically goes up when you do it this way. Okay. So two more things and I'll be done. Jay Rometty has absolutely engaged IBM in a social way. This is, she feels this is the future <coughs> for where we're heading. The absolute future for where we're heading on stuff. So just the other day she did, she was the keynote at this uh, Council for Foreign Relations um, and she described social networks as the next production line, the assembly line, the production line going forward. That's how she looks at it. She also says that your value is not what you know, but what you share, and that this will change who you hire. You almost need to look at social as part of you work. How do I attract good talent? How do I attract good talent? How do I maintain good talent? Okay. And then she says, in the near future, IBMers will be rated by their peers and their value and maybe even how they get, how many stars they get. So she's actually looking to compensate the best sharers, the best people with an IBM that share their expertise and knowledge. She's actually gonna maybe change the compensation model based on the social model, which I think is fascinating, right? And then, 
to IBM itself, she says, the strategy at IBM is that we will be, IBM will be the preeminent social network corporation in the discussion. That is her goal, is to make IBM the preeminent, preeminent social example, social business. So she is 100% bought in on this. She realizes that this is the way for us to be competitive different, to be competitive difference and be a differentiator for us going forward, right? So she's gonna focus on this idea of the client hub. So she's actually going to generate a, a, a solution on top of connections that's going to focus specifically on how IBM as a whole relate to our customers in their language, in their industry, et cetera, and remove the hurdles and the obstacles with that idea. That we generate a single one view of that customer to IBM itself. So her strategy is to leverage social as a huge part of that. That includes the cell aspect here, um, that we're actually going to not only change our, our CRM application, uh, but we're actually going to make the CRM application both mobile and social at the same time. So we've had a huge amount of funding put towards this. You'll see this executed in the first half of this year some of it executed in the third quarter this year. But this is, we are literally changing the way we're thinking and changing the way we're doing business and that we are double down on social as a way to change what's going on. She needs a way to shift what we're doing and how we're thinking, and this is her strategy to do it. Thank you very much. I'll be here for the next two days. I appreciate your time. Thank you.